Welcome to the Scattered Sheep Report, a weekly update on the sign of the times with your host, Jackie Almore. Join Jackie as she tracks the apostasy in the church and the birth pangs heralding the soon return of the King of Kings. Greetings, Scattered Sheep. Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Jackie Alnor. Well, you know, today is Friday, May 27th, and uh, I got this very strange um, notification that somebody sent to me, and oh, a former insider with TBN telling me what the latest situation is now with the uh, ailing Jan Crouch coming from the TBN's management, it reads, as you know, Jan, Jan Crouch, was recently admitted to the hospital. Today, our chairman, Matt Crouch, and his family, together with some members of TBN's management team, met with Jan's doctors to receive a definitive diagnosis of Jan's condition. Sadly, the news is not good. After much prayer and with the counsel of the Almighty and concurrence from TBN's spiritual leadership, the Crouch family would like to share with you the following information. Jan suffered a significant stroke on Wednesday afternoon. After much evaluation by her medical team, it appears that the stroke was so severe in nature that recovery of any kind is unlikely short of a miracle from our God. Be comforted in the fact that Jan is still resting comfortably with her family at her side. We will provide more information as it becomes available. We ask that you remain diligent in supporting the work of the TBN ministry while the Crouch family works through this very difficult time. We also ask you again to keep this as a matter of confidential prayer until the family is ready to speak publicly about Jan's condition. Please continue to respect the privacy of all concerned and refer any media inquiries to Colby May or John Casoria, which are the uh, staff lawyers at Trinity Broadcasting Network. Um, you know, it, it, it is it is sad that, but, you know, Jan is, is no spring chicken, as, the, as they say. I mean, she's getting up there in years. And, um, oh, you know, it, it, I, just, I just ponder about all of the um, extravagance that her and Paul Crouch uh, we're able to live to ripe old ages while still just enjoying the benefits of fleecing the flock of Jesus Christ and 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 f- believing that themselves to be little gods that deserve to live like such. And uh, there'll be, when Jan goes on to her reward, there'll be no words of acclamation coming from me. Because I don't even see a whole lot of redeeming value in that woman's life. And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry if it's insensitive to say it, but at this point in time, she's not dead yet. And um, and I don't wish her that way, but that, that, you know, she goes the way of all flesh like all the rest of us do when we hit a ripe old age like that. But, you know, I, I, I just, you know, started thinking about there's a lot of of um, heretics as uh, or evil workers in the church who, you know, are getting up there in age. And, you know, Paul Crouch, he, he passed away a couple years ago. And um, then you've got, uh, you know, right now, Kim Clement is uh, in constant medical help or, or care trying to beat brain cancer. Uh, Rod Parsley is fighting for his life with throat cancer. And, um, you know, and, and, and again, I'm not rejoicing over those things. Sadly, so many people, I've lost several people in my own family from the dreaded C word. And so I don't wish that on anyone. But, you know, it just doesn't matter how much you, high highly you think of yourself or how strongly you promote the belief that you can claim your healing and, and you speak it forth and God has to back your words. And so the people that teach that, they, they, when, it, when the push comes to shove, they can't, they can't uh, deliver on it. And, uh, you know, I, I uh, am happy to know that Jan and Paul Crouch's granddaughter, Brittany Crouch, is writing her autobiography. 
and uh, I do have a rough draft of it and um, that she's allowed me to share about portions of it. I haven't read a lot of it, trying to let her, not wanting to steal her thunder, because when her book comes out, by then, very likely Jan will no longer be with us, and so, you know, Jan and Paul won't suffer the ramifications of the truth coming out publicly about their lives. But I do want to read this portion from the chapter in her book or her manuscript called Truth Hurts. And um, she, she, just, she just speaks plainly. Speaking of Jan Crouch, she says, My grandmother is an evil woman. She may not have always been that way, but she certainly is now. I'm embarrassed by her. I'm embarrassed that I was ever close to her. I wanted so badly for the person she portrays herself to be on television to be her true character, but it's not and never was. I believe it's the reason she wears so much makeup. She doesn't want the world to see what she truly is underneath. It's her defense mechanism, and one that has only gotten more ridiculous and scary looking over time. I wish I could tell you I knew where it started, but I can't. Or I don't, excuse me. We are talking about a woman who hasn't spoken to her firstborn son, my father, in over three years, is yet to meet my brother's one-year-old son, her great-grandson, and is also yet to meet my sister's daughter, her great-granddaughter, and for what? I literally could not give you a reason why. If she is angry with me, then that's one thing. But she has no excuse to take it out on her innocent great-grandchildren. When my grandfather passed away, speaking of Paul Crouch, she didn't even have the decency to call my father his only legitimate son and let him know. She buried my grandfather in an unmarked mausoleum so that no one from my side of the family would know where he was buried. Apparently, she wants to keep us from ever being able to visit him to pay our respects. Why? I have no idea. Believe me when I tell you my heart is crushed into a million pieces. I have tears in my eyes knowing that my grandfather died and I wasn't able to say goodbye. I found out about his death because someone who I don't know sent me a message on Facebook wishing me condolences. My father hadn't been informed even after he had been dead for over 24 hours. Believe me, there is hurt in this family. But not so bad God can't heal it. I have faith that it's possible. And someday I may be able to name my firstborn child God Made Me Forget. At least I hope so. The working title for uh, Brittany Crouch's um, book is called For Such a Time as This. And again, she's still in the middle of litigation from the Crouch family suing her for trying to keep them accountable to um, their their financial shenanigans going on over at TBN when she was the chief finance, financial officer. So she has become their enemy by telling the truth. And that's pretty much what it boils down to. Now, you know, I've mentioned uh, Kim Clement and uh, he was the so-called prophet pretty much in the, um, oh golly, I guess for, you know, for the past 20 years he's been the main so-called prophet of Trinity Broadcasting Network. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he can beat this brain cancer. It, uh, things don't look good for, for, for him, for hit the outcome of that. And um, because that's a pretty serious um, place to have cancer is, is in the brain. But, uh, you know, I, I was just looking at, at his track record when he would prophesy over TBN and over our government and over all kinds of things. You know, even even if, if he ever got into specifics, specifics never quite worked out for him. If he, if, he so, if he supposedly was prophesying and he was speaking in these dark sayings and not really being clear, he could always kind of twist those things and interpret them as... as into something that uh, later evolved that he could connect it to to make himself look like a prophet. It was um, always to um, lift up himself. You know, somebody posted a, a scripture that makes me think of all of these, uh, you know, TBN entertainers and everybody. Um, and uh, it, it was the passage where where Jesus says, do not practice your righteousness before men for then you have your reward and so all I can say for for Paul and Jan Crouch 
they've already had their reward. If they make it into heaven by you know, the skin of their teeth, I don't think they're going to have much reward on the other side because they did all those things to be seen of men. And, uh, and those who compromise the truth in order to use their platform um, to make themselves look good, they have their reward also. But uh, it's interesting now as the um, politic, the um, presidential season is well underway that uh, we know that the reign of the anti-president Obama is coming to an end. To look back before he was elected president, a year before back in, um, oh, this is July from 2007, before Obama got the presidency, Kim Clement was on TBN talking to, to Paul Crouch, to Paul and Jan, and prof telling him, oh boy, of course, the Lord only speaks to Kim, right? Um, and this is what he was saying to them on that Praise the Lord program of uh, July 5th, 2007. He says, you know, we have people saying, you have prophecies that didn't come to pass. I know, but I have hundreds that have. <laughs> well, you know, the test of a prophet is 100% accuracy, you know. So, I mean, hundreds that have know that he can try to twist things into making it look like he prophesied something. And he goes on, he says... God said to me that the person who gets elected, we're talking 2008, will look like a person who is not a Christian or a real believer like we understand. He, he says, but, he, God says, but I'll trick the people. And when he gets into the Oval Office, he will fill him with the Holy Spirit. He may not stand up and speak in tongues. He's not going to come stand and shake and stuff. We're not going to really see it except in policy and things. But I know who it is. I'm not scared to say who it is. But what if it doesn't happen? The will of the people, it can change it. I prophesied the re-election of President Bush, and I was unashamed to say. Oh, but he wouldn't say this time who the, the, the next president's name was, though God told him. And he says... The prophetic word opens up a whole new world out there for you to be enticed. God entices you with a future. That's the glory of the future. He entices you. Remember something. He wants you there. He says he's going to get you there and he's going to lure you there. Can you match? Can you look at all of those verbs he's using? God lures you. He entices you. He tricks you. I mean... <laughs> It really sounds to me like Kim Clement wasn't in, uh, associated or linked in with the God of the Bible, but with the God of this world. And, you know, unfortunately, that's really who seems to have given uh, Jan and Paul Crouch all of their worldly possessions. Remember when the devil tempted Jesus on the Mount of Temptation, he says, you can have all of this if you would bow down and worship me. Well, of course, Jesus said, you know, you know, he, 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 Jesus rebuked Satan, but that's not what Jan and Paul did, apparently. So they got it all, and, uh, you know, it's up for Paul, and it's soon to be up for Jan. What does it profit a person to gain the whole world and forfeit their soul? That's what I'd be asking about now if I were in Jan Crouch's hospital bed. Well, right after this word, we'll look into these things, the... The history of the Crouch is a little further. Join us every Saturday night for Time of the Signs, a weekly study of Bible prophecy with the best teachers from the past and present. In these days, when the news headlines use words like apocalyptic or cataclysmic, watchful Christians know for a fact that we are nearer to the coming of the Lord than when we first believed. Remember, Jesus rebuked the religious leader saying, When is it evening, you say? It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites! You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the sign of the times. 
Jesus gave us the signs to look for so that his return would not surprise us as it will the rest of the world. Time of the Signs will help you grow in your knowledge of Bible prophecy so that you will know the times we are in and will always be rapture ready. Here's another excerpt from Brittany's autobiography. She, she writes, There was honestly a point in time when I was convinced that because my grandmother had stopped communicating with me and stopped loving me, that Jesus must have stopped loving me as well. After all, my grandmother was the self-proclaimed spokesperson for the will of God, wasn't she? If not, she certainly acted like it. I was convinced I had done something that was beyond the realm of forgiveness and therefore damned to hell. It's kind of odd to say, but I never truly understood the meaning of the word love until my own family came after me with more hatred and vengeance than I knew how to handle. It's when you're at your lowest, exiled from your own family, the people who are meant to love you no matter what, lonely and afraid, that you learn the true meaning of the word love. I interviewed Brittany Crouch a couple of years ago, and I want to play a few excerpts of what she had to say about Grandmother Jan Crouch, and this again from an eyewitness family member. Can you confirm if that Matthew Crouch is not Paul Crouch's biological offspring? <laughs> um, I haven't seen paternity test results or anything like that, but I do know, I can say that I have had conversations with, with my grandmother on more than one occasion when, you know, when she, you know, we were out together or having dinner together. Um, I, in fact, one of the conversations was in her house in Orlando. But, um, you know, she basically, she's admitted to me and, and others more than once that um, Matthew is the product of an affair she had with um, Mr. America in 1954. His name was Dick Dubois. Um, Do you think that's why she is more partial to Matthew because of his paternity? Absolutely. Yes. I think, I think Matthew is, you know, from what she's told me, you know, he's her love child. And um, that's why he's been able to get away with, you know, so much, so much. So much of this, you know, cutting corners and and um, you know uh, contract to produce, you know, million dollar movies. Uh, there's there's no way um, they would have agreed to do that if my dad, you know, with my dad's production company, and he had a production company for a long time that did not do any work for TBN. Um, and and she's you know she's protecting her her love child for, for does, lack of a better word. Does do you think that Paul? senior knows about this? No, absolutely not. You don't think he knows that that's not his true son? Um, I don't think, if he does, he's in denial about it. You know, um, my grandparents, they live in their own reality. Um, they kind of make up their own rules, what, are they, what they want to believe. Um, and so uh, if he was made aware of it at some point, um, he's completely blocked that out. Now, isn't that sad? Because we know that Matthew Crouch is now the board of directors chair and every, uh, the head of TBN. And uh, I'm sure after his mother passes off the scene, there's, there's, there could even, I, I, I don't even know if, if uh, with him at the helm, if TBN can even survive, actually. Uh, but, you know, ha what, a, what a pity. And what a weird twist of fate that the... A uh, child of adultery would be the one that takes things over, and yet Paul Crouch's namesake, Paul Crouch Jr., would be kicked out of his of his uh, organization that his 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 biological father founded. There's just a real ugly. <laughs> it's an it's an ugly trick of the devil. I I would say. I mean that is just absolutely crazy. Um, but anyway, you know, there's another portion, a couple of paragraphs I'd like to read from the granddaughter, Brittany. 
She writes, I remember watching an episode of TBN's flagship program, Praise the Lord, one night as a young kid. I subsequently saw a video of this same episode posted on YouTube many years later after I searched for my grandfather's name. It's a clip of he and my grandmother hosting their program in TBN's old set located in Tustin, maroon carpets and tacky gold furniture in the background. My grandfather is at the pulpit, riled up into a frenzy, talking about God's power and how we as believers are given the same authority on earth as God has in heaven. I don't even recognize him. He's younger, quicker, more lucid and fluid in his speech. He boldly looks at the camera, pointing a finger up in the air for emphasis and proclaims, I am a little God. My stomach churns deep inside of myself, recalling this memory of my grandfather. Could he have really believed that? Where is that written in the Bible? I must have missed that chapter somewhere along the line. The stories I read and learn from within the greatest book ever written are mostly of humility, service, challenges, and seeing how God can work through the most impossible of circumstance to do his will, despite the challenges this world creates. If my grandfather truly believed he was a little God that walked among the rest of us mere mortals, then therein lies the problem. He made himself too good for repentance, humility, or God's endless grace and mercy to those who fear and seek him. My grandfather was an alcoholic? Well, yeah, that's okay. He was a God who walked on the earth, so he didn't need help. My grandfather was physically abusive? Well, no problem. Gods can do whatever they wanted. My grandfather literally shot a loaded weapon off in TBN's presidential offices aimed at one of his assistants? That's okay. Gods had authority on earth to do as they pleased, grant life and take life all the same. I think you get the picture I'm trying to paint here. Oh, boy. Was that ever a mouthful? You know, and, um, you know, I can't remember if it's actually in the interview, but uh, I talked with her about her... um, her father's propensity to go after men instead of um, loving women. And apparently that created havoc in uh, Paul and Jan's life because, you know, as far as long as Brittany could remember, her grandparents never lived with each other. They always had separate residences and there was always talk of her homosexual grandfather and her uh, grandmother who was just you know who pretty much operated the old Christian casting couch at TBN in fact here's a little bit of our discussion about Jan's propensity to go after guys especially those that look like Jesus yeah what what about this Jesus character at the Holy Land experience I I see I saw on the behind the scenes to so see I watched the show like I said you don't yeah and she was sh- doing this whole tour behind the scenes arm in arm with this guy like snuggling with him through this whole thing it was like shocking how indiscreet it was um do you have any insight into that oh absolutely you know it it was (laughs) um yeah it's it was very bizarre to me because you know when i would go and visit my grandmother in orlando you know he was always around um and and they would hold hands and and walk together and um and, you know, I, I witnessed them, you know, snuggling, exchanging kisses, and, and I'm like going, what, what in the world? <laughs> and, and um, you know, I, I asked her about it. I said, Grandma, what are you doing? And she, she said, um, she goes, oh, I kiss everybody on, on the lips. And I said, what? She said, yeah, you know, I kiss everybody on the lips. It's not a big deal. It doesn't mean anything. And it's like, uh I don't know. It, it, very, it made me very, very uncomfortable. Does um, he, does I, that, I can say that. What's his name? His name is Les. Okay. Um, and, and he's actually, it's very sad because, you know, he's, um, he's got a beautiful wife and three beautiful children. And, and you know, here he is, you know, clearly having an inappropriate relationship with my grandmother. Oh. Um, and, you know, he, he doesn't leave her side. It's like she travels somebody she, somewhere, she takes Les with her. You know, it's a sad thing when people around the world, their view of Christianity are the Christian television networks, and here are the people who are the, the, you know, the role models of, of wonderful Christian couples are people like Paul and Jan Crouch, you know, a couple who <laughs> had a sham of a marriage. And then you have the head of Daystar, uh, Joni and Marcus, or Marcus and Joni Lamb. And Marcus's famous um, affair he had with his assistant, who was a, supposedly a friend of Joni's. And, and that whole thing, you know, it's still going. Uh, I guess they, they have one of those 
uh, on-air relationships, just like Paul and Jan's on-air relationship. And for a while, uh, you know, God TV's founders, um, Rory and Wendy Alec, Rory ran off with a girl who, in South Africa, who was a spitting image of his wife, but, you know, I guess, you know, he, uh, you know, was, was happier with this other woman and, you know, left the whole thing behind. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing to me that these people who do not live godly in Christ Jesus are the ones who have all of the um, exposure and, and, and twisting of the Bible. Every one of those couples that I mentioned all use the give to get uh, word, faith, uh, prosperity, gospel in order to uh, build their kingdoms here on earth. And I really think those kingdoms are being used and have been used to spread the great apostasy, the, those who are turning away from the faith, those who have uh, allowed the spirit of the age, the worldliness and the carnality to come into the so-called visible church. And they talk about their uh, spreading the gospel around the world, and you rarely hear a good gospel message from any of these televangelists. I mean, the, the immorality of people like Paula White and Benny Hinn, who were caught hand-in-hand hand coming out of a hotel together, and uh, now she's married to some uh, rock star from the 70s, and the two of them are running around talking sex and um, groping at each other in public. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is so grievous, but anyway, the, the money and the um, prestige and all of those things, it's all to make themselves look good. It isn't to lift up Jesus, it's to lift up themselves. And, you know, for this to happen when we're so close to the return of Christ, I don't think that's any mistake, because certainly in the uh, epistle, of Jude right before Revelation. Jude wanted to just write about our common salvation, but he felt that he had to that he had to write exhorting the readers there to contend earnestly for the faith. He says because certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God in our Lord Jesus Christ. When they act that way, they are denying Christ. And they are horrible representatives of him. And yet they're the, the biggest, the, the most outspoken ones next to the Pope. And of course, what kind of a representative of Jesus is, is Pope Francis being? Wow, you know, it's, it's, um, it's pretty scary. But it's interesting what Jude says about these people. He says that they are spots in your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, plucked, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, fat foaming up their own shame, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Can you imagine looking at the faces of the very people that Jude was referring to as in the end times that this would happen and that they are being preserved for the blackness of darkness forever? Whew, that's not a very good fate, I wouldn't say. You know, so, um, you know, is it too late for Jan to repent? Well, while there's life, there's, there's, you know, whether there's breath, there's hope maybe, but I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. She got her reward here. She, uh, you know, she didn't exactly show righteousness out in front of men, but she sure paraded herself in front of them. And she's uh, about to pull the curtain. Perhaps. We'll see. Maybe she'll come around, but at her age, she doesn't have much time anyway. So... You know, it's it's just a very a very grievous thing. So, you know, I, I can't even say to pray for TBN. Cast those things upon Jesus. And until next week, keep on the lookout. I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Scattered Sheep Report.